if you guys will remember a couple weeks before uh, we did Pastor Bill's service, we had our baptism out here. Baptism, baptized, I think, 15 people. <laughs> and uh, you, you probably won't recall because I can't. Uh, had to look it up. The, the scripture that talks about that is Matthew 28. And, you know, 19 through 20. I'm just going to read it here as a little refresher. It says, Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey all that I have commanded. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. <clears throat> well, a couple weeks ago, we followed that command, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Bill and I have doing, been doing that second part, teach them to obey all the, that I have commanded. Now that's a tall order when you throw the word all in there. Um, <clears throat> and them, them is you guys, and me, you know, being led by the Holy, Holy Spirit. Um, and all of the commands, well, that's kind of what I want to park on firsthand here today. Because we could easily, as we do as human beings on a daily basis probably, if you're like me, slip back into the old law. Amen. Starting with the first ten, you know, the big, the big ten. And then all the other Levitical laws, you know, no one could ever live up to those except Jesus himself. And that's not what it's talking about though. We're not under the law anymore, other scriptures tell us. Which means the old law, the Old Testament law, the Levitical law. But what we do sometimes as <clears throat> modern day believers is throw out the baby with the bathwater. We say, well, I don't have to follow the Ten Commandments anymore. I don't have to follow any of the Levitical laws. Because we're under the new law, which is grace. Yes. Which is true. But the baby in the bathwater deal is, if you do that to an extreme, you have chaos. Amen. I think all of you would agree with that. The world we live in today is a perfect example of that. You, you know, even 10 years ago, you wouldn't have seen people riding in, at, on college campuses and getting away with what they get away with now. If you would have stepped on top of a cop car 10 years ago, you'd been thrown in jail. Okay, and so, you see what I'm saying is we're, we're slowly deteriorating as a nation and as a world. So then, <clears throat> do we go back to the Levitical laws and the Ten Commandments? That's not the answer. The answer is in here. And what he's talking about when he said, obey all that I have commanded. He's talking about, as he was on earth, he gave us a number of principles to follow. And through the whole New Testament, it talks about them. And Paul reiterates them in his letters. Um, and that's, what, that's kind of where I want to go for a while here now in this chapter 2 of Branded Heart Fellowship. What are... What are all of the commands Jesus left? He's, and he, again, it's, this is not a uh, suggestion. He's, I'm going to read it again. He says, go and make disciples. It doesn't read, if you feel like it, or if you'd like to, or if it's a good day, go make disciples. Jesus had, he, he took charge wherever he was. People didn't have to wonder what he was thinking. So he says, Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey all that I have commanded. Again, none of us are going to measure up. But we've talked, you know, since, you, since this church has been in existence, the teaching has been the gospel. And yeah, right. Jesus commands and the way we're supposed to live and conduct ourselves as followers of Christ. And we've, you know, we've gone over that for three years. Um, so it's a lot. 
And yet, that's where his grace comes in. So that for balance's sake, and balance is one of my favorite words in life. So if we're not going to go back and revert back to all the Levitical laws and Ten Commandments, which is way extreme, he doesn't expect that. The other extreme would be to abuse the grace, correct? He, you know, he didn't <clears throat> die for us so that we could go out and just sin because we're covered under grace. That's not what it's about. And so we're going to talk about that the next you know, few months probably and, and, and get some particulars of what that means in our own personal lives. You know, it's one thing to sit up here and read Scripture and everybody learn to quote it and then go home and never apply what you've learned. That does not honor God. I'd rather have you guys memorize and put into practice in your life one sentence in the Bible then memorize and quote back to me the whole Bible and not apply any of it. Yes, that's good, that's good. And so one of the things that uh, we're, we're going to concentrate again on also this next year is personal Bible study. And I realize there may start being fewer and fewer more people each week because you don't, you're don't tired of hearing that. And that's okay. God is sending in these walls who He wants here. That's right. And I, I'll only say this once. I said it to the home group, and I'll tell you guys once, and then you'll, anybody else will just have to hear it from you or go to the tape. But God, I believe, called me here to this position. And He also gave me the responsibility to answer to Him. And if, and if I hear something from Him and don't acknowledge it and act on it, I can answer for that. And I pledge to you that I'm going to do the best I can with His Spirit's guidance Amen. to give you the truths that He tells me. Okay, and, and He's really pressed on my heart the last couple months since it, since it was really since it was uh, obvious that He was getting ready to take Bill. The main thing on my heart that He put there is that we need to kick it up a notch in our own personal Bible studies. And, and you could ask any of the one who goes to the home group, but we talked about that fairly deeply last Wednesday night. And again, I'm not, I don't want to beat up on people. I, I'm as guilty as lack of doing what these all the commands are as every one of you, okay? So I'm hoping we'll work together on this. Because uh, as I've said in the past, me standing up here and repeating scripture, it's okay, but there's nothing like being in the word yourself. If you're getting sometimes you may you may be getting secondhand a secondhand message from me. That's why you need to check me, check the scriptures I, I quote. Uh, but there's nothing like going one on one with the Lord Amen. in the Bible. Okay, I'll just keep I'll keep encouraging you to do that. <clears throat> the, the the last sentence in that scripture is, and be sure of this. He's emphasizing, he wants you to pay attention here. He says, be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And when I see that part of that scripture, that's a relief to me. Because if I had to do those first two things on my own, I couldn't do it. None of us could. We can't follow his commands without him being with us. And what this means is living inside us. So it, well, a little side trail here, but you know, if, if you're here today and you're not sure that he's living inside you, maybe you need to think about that and talk to him about it. And it's, again, it's repetitive, but it's the truth. You know, all he says is believe and tell somebody. That's what Roman 10, Romans 10, 9 says. It's that simple. It, and, and so many people I've seen over the years <clears throat> go to church all their life and I'm sitting at their deathbed, and they and I assumed they were a believer, and uh, they asked me, "Tell me about this born again thing," and I'm, I'm shocked. And so I just tell them, "I said, well, you know, I, I guess I've gone to church all my life. I've never really done that." And so that right then on their deathbed, and I'm sure a number of you have seen this too, they say, "I believe." They're saved. If, they, if you believe in your heart, you are saved. 
It doesn't matter all the other stuff that denominationalism has created to add to that. So if you're wondering, if there's just one of you wondering right now, talk to me or talk to someone else in here. That It's that simple. And so once you do that, the Holy Spirit comes to indwell you. It's hard to believe. I still can't fathom it. I've been doing this for a long time. But it's true. And that, to me, gives me comfort. When he says, I will be, I'll be, be with you always, even to the end of the age. And I've done some study on the end of the age, and it looks to me like he's talking about the age we're living in right now with him physically not here. He's here in spirit. So when he returns, that's the end of this particular age. He returns to take us with him. So that's right now, guys. So now the question is, once we say, we read, uh, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. The question that came to my mind was, do we really believe that? And he says, he says he's with us always, even to the end of the age. Because I've watched enough believers over the years to see a pattern. Folks that, that you know, Pastor Bill used to tell us there's, there's, there's a, I can't quote it right, but there's, there's, all Christians in there, and there's people who say they are, or something like that. I, I can't quote it right, but and what he meant, what he meant was that very thing. I, all of us in here could fool the rest of us and make all of us think that you're a believer, but you can't fool God. You know, we say that quite often, but it's true. You know, we He knows whether we truly believe in Him or not. And that's where, that's where it starts. Because once you have that belief, he's indwelling, living in you, and he then has something to work with. What is it you saying that uh, the people ask you if they're Christian? Well, I, it's just a simple deal. I, I've learned over the years that different people define the word Christian differently. And if I don't know you and know how you define that word, I'm not sure I want to say to you that I'm a Christian. What I tell people is I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. And to a person, every time I've said that to someone, rather than because they, they'll let me know they're a Christian or they go to church or whatever, and I say, well, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Every time I've said that to someone, it makes them wake up and say, and they always say, well, what do you mean? Because they want to know if I'm following some cult deal or some, you know, I'm not just saying I'm a Christian, you know. It's a it's a it's a good open door for for conversation. That's that's why he wanted me to say that so you could hear that. Those of you who haven't. <clears throat> anyway, he's so he's promised to be with us always. <clears throat> that comforts me because I know I'm not worthy to even stand before him, honestly. Uh, but I also know how he works. I've studied the Bible enough to know that he called me here and he wants to use me just like he does all of you. And so that gives me strength to stand up here. I'm not naturally a public speaker. I'm not naturally a teacher. But when the Spirit's living in you, hang on. If you're really willing to follow and serve him. That's the reason this church is as successful as it is after three years. It's because you guys have done that. You have followed your lead and, and found your niche, however you want to word it. It's, it's really what it's doing is operating in your giftedness that God gave you, answering your call. That's why this outfit runs smoothly. We were just talking about John a little while ago. Well, if John went to be with his cousin Bill Vibe today, we have a little glitch here in the video department. Right? There's a great example. This is not a prophecy, John, don't worry. <laughs> and I'm grateful for John. Amen. He also... Yeah. He also manages our website. He's been starting to tweak a little bit because Bill hasn't really felt well enough to work with him on it here recently. So we're working on that too. So if you go on it or, or tell someone to go on it and they don't see much, in whatever they're looking for. Just have them be patient. We're working on it. Okay, Amen. okay. enough side trail. Uh, maybe we're not fo 
following his commands because we don't really believe it. That's, that was my point of asking, do we believe that he is with us always? That's between you and God. Remember, he lives in you if you're a follower of his, and if, you, if you've given your life to him and, and truly believe. If that's the case, he's wanting, he has a place for you in this body. Remember, he's the head of the church or the body of the church. Uh, and so he wants to use us. When we don't, uh, uh, we don't, we don't have to do this on our own power, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because none of us has that capability. What happens is, and you can, a lot of you I'm sure can relate, when I've done things on my own power, it may start out good, but if God is not in it and leading it, it seems to fizzle. Uh, because I don't have the strength to carry on. You know, things will disappoint me or this person will and pretty soon I eh, forget it. I'm sure all of you have seen that in your lives too, but if not yourself with other people. So we have to tap into that that power that he's offering in order to be successful for kingdom. You guys will start hearing me say a lot in chapter two of Brandon Heart Fellowship about kingdom living. Some of you know it better than others because we've spent time together and a lot of you are kingdom thinkers. Amen. That's why this church is successful because it's a kingdom thing. It's not a denominational thing. And I, again, do not want to downplay denominations. They have their place, but I've just seen over the years what happens. And in the churches, many churches that I've worked in, helping them try to get healthy, there's one common thread. There's a number, but the one I'm talking about now is, and this, I'm going to repeat this, this is very important, and we don't want to do that here. They have organized the Holy Spirit out of their ministries. I want to say it again. They have organized the Holy Spirit out of their individual ministries in that church. When that happens, they start going downhill. Why? Because of what I said earlier. They're using their own natural man to try to make things work. And I'm sure we could spend the rest of the day up here. So a lot of you giving testimony to that very thing that you've seen in churches. And again, I'm not here to condemn churches. I'm just here to help us stay healthy. Amen. Okay? So we're not going to do that. You know, I'm, I'm right now, I uh, wasn't planning this, but you need to know. Uh, when I, I first came here two months after Bill started the church, and that's when he got sick with cancer the first time. So I've been here ever since. And after a while, for the last year and a half, he and I have tried to come up with our bylaws. All we have right now is a set of bylaws that's about 40 pages that he got from Texas when he went to the, the place he went to for to learn about cowboy churches, which we found out later was a offshoot of the one we're affiliated with. We are affiliated with the American Fellowship of Cowboy Churches. The one that he got this bylaws, set of bylaws and constitution from, we found out later, was an outfit that tried to be under the American Fellowship of Cowboy Churches, and I won't say their name, but they're affiliated with a denomination, and it says that on their organization, right there, in black and white. And so when Bill and I would work on it and started to revise it, but he got sick and it was never done. So I'm working on that right now. Um, but it's, I can tell you this, it's not gonna be 40 pages. <laughs> uh, if I can remember, I will bring a copy and I'll make copies and put them on the table next week of the uh, covenant we signed with the American Fellowship of Cowboy Churches to, to join them. Does anyone want to take a guess on how many pages that is? One. One. <laughs> and the bottom half of that one page is just signature lines. Amen. 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 But when you read what it says, it says all you need. Because it says we covenant with them to, to follow this. Now, on the extreme, and I apologize for this side trail, but I think the Lord wants you to hear this. 
taken to an extreme following this 40 page deal, we, we can easily adopt that and just where it says blah 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 conference that I'm not going to repeat, we can put in Brandon Hart Fellowship, Bakersfield, California. And we could add another 40. We could make it 80 pages. But you know what I've seen happen when that happens? Is what I told you earlier. Pretty soon, you've organized the Holy Spirit out of your ministry. As long as, long as I'm drawing breath up here, we're not going to do that. This church has been successful because Jesus Christ is leading it. And we follow the concepts and precepts he's got in here. So that's how, just so you know, that's how our is going to read. It's going to be about as long as that declaration that we signed with the AFCC. That mainly we're going to follow the Bible. And I'll tell you why. Once you start making articles and sections and subsections and this kind of stuff, there's no end. Where do you stop when you start walking by sight rather than walking by faith? Amen. Because sight would say, well, somebody might try to sue us because they tripped out here walking up front, so we better make this article in section and blah, blah, blah. Or when we have the youth rodeo club, somebody might... You, there's no end to that. And even one, when you've ended and you think, well, we got everything covered, nope, something will come out of left field. That's because you've tried to live by sight. We're told to live by faith, not by sight. And that's a practical way to do it. We just say, Lord, we're trusting you that anything that comes up, you've got the answer here because I can guarantee you there's nothing that, that can be answered that isn't in here. Okay? And that's a fact. Okay, back on the track here. Um, we don't have to, to do this church deal on our power, like I said. We can't. I teach you and you in turn teach others. That's kind of the, the model. If you don't believe me, read the book of Acts. Pretty good model the Lord came up with. Uh, and what we've done in the last 2,000 years is improve on what he created in Acts. And as human beings, haven't we done a wonderful job? We've got hundreds of denominations that most of them say, we're the right way. Those other people are full of crap. <laughs> well, if they're all the right one, who do we follow? You see my point? So anyway, back on track again. <laughs> I get on my bandwagon when it comes to that stuff. Um, Again, I teach you guys, and in turn, you teach others, okay? You don't have to have a degree. All you have to do to teach someone else any gospel is know just a little bit more than them. Simple. There's a lot of people out there who have no clue. So keep that in mind. Don't wait to get to some certain, certain point in your life and then say, okay, I guess maybe God can use me now. No, you've wasted those days up to that point. So when he puts someone in front of you, it's obvious you're supposed to say something. You know what I'm talking about. You've been there. Okay? Instead of saying, well, no, I'm not qualified, just do it. Just say, hey, I'm a follower of Christ. You can say that. Yeah. And every one of you, every one of you, if you're truly a follower of Christ, if the Holy Spirit's living in you, has a story. That happened to you somehow. There's a reason you gave your life to the Lord. If nothing else, just tell them that. People are wanting to hear that, okay? Starting with your own families. That's good, that's real good, that's good. good. Okay, now, um, I, I, I had this question, why? You know, why, to, well, why, do, why follow these commands? Um, in Galatians 5, there's some answers. Uh, I'll read, sorry, in verse 13. <clears throat> you have been called to live in freedom but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. That's what I was talking about earlier when I said this, this grace that we've been, that's been passed on to us, this free gift of eternal life, knowing that we're not accountable for our sins, past, present, and future, 
our nature would tend to want to abuse that, wouldn't it? Say, well, shoot, huh. I'm, I got my ticket to heaven here. I got my fire insurance. I can go do whatever I want. Well, I would suggest you don't do that. <laughs> because those of us that have, have come crawling back with our tail feathers burnt to the right path. Uh, so, you know, that's the thing, though. God gives us free choice, free will. We can choose to do that. But I can tell you this, the, the choices we make have consequences, whether negative or positive. When you make a choice, it's, you know, you've heard me say this up here in the past. Uh, we're walking along, we're doing okay, and here comes that fork in the road. And Ed would say, when you come to a fork in the road, do what, Ed? Take it. Take it. <laughs> In this case, uh, I think Yogi Bear was a prophet. Uh, yes, he was. When, when we come to this, and we know, we've all been there, okay? Here, it's like, or another analogy is a little, you see on the cartoons, the little devil and the little angel on each other. You know? here, here you go, you're walking and boom, the devil, the little devil saying, go this way, and the little angel said, no, better not, better come this way. Well, keep this in mind as a practical application. The further, the more steps we take on that not so good a choice, the harder it is and the longer it takes to get back on the right path. Anybody say amen to that? Amen. So with that principle in mind, knowing we're making that wrong choice on a daily basis in my case, we're taking one step Wait a minute, that's the wrong step. It's only one step over to that other side from there. Pretty quick, pretty painless. Maybe no one else ever, ever even saw it other than the Lord. So that same principle, the further you go on that negative step or trail, the consequences are there. Some of us have gone so far that some consequences won't be erased till we're in heaven. You're still living with those consequences, okay? And you know, all the Lord really is, is saying here, and it's this simple. Make the right choice one at a time. It's a very, it sounds so basic and so simple, but if we do that on a daily basis, all of a sudden you find yourself in a week, you're going, wow, I, I made a whole week without finishing the sentence. Because you just, you, you don't have to worry. Some of us here worry about next week and next month and next year, and you're so busy worrying that you can't hear the Lord. <laughs> obey one decision at a time. Just make just obey one decision at a time and see where you see where you end up in a week. Just try it. Yes, that's good. Okay, going on in Galatians 5. You have been called to live in freedom, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use it to serve one another in love. So there's that replacement. Instead of going, me, 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 I want to do this, and I'm going to make this decision out of gratitude for what Christ has done for us. Let's say, you know what? I, it's a sacrifice, but I'm going to go, and I'm going to love that person, which means different things, but you know what I mean. That's the, that's the, the precept is you see a need, you go meet it. You can't buy that kind of blessing with all the money in the world. When you obey, you are blessed. You can take that to the bank every time. Okay, going on in, in Galatians. For the whole law can be summed up in one command, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. And I added in there, thus, the body of Christ being destroyed us okay so i say let the holy spirit guide your lives then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves our sinful nature wants to do evil which is just the opposite of what our spirit wants these two forces are constantly fighting against one another and and we're not and we're not and, and that keeps us from carrying out uh, our good intentions. How many times have your good intentions, like I was just saying a little a few minutes ago, uh, 
You've had good intentions then, just can't seem to follow them through to completion. Again, we, we, that's when we're walking in the flesh. Um, but when we are directed by the Holy Spirit, we are no longer under the law. That's what the last part of verse 26 says. Now, I'm sorry, verse 18. Uh, there's, a, there's two examples in, in Galatians 5. The first one starts in verse 19. It's first. I think God did that for a reason. Because he talks about our, our flesh, our, our sinful nature. The second set of consequences is starts in verse 22. So here, here's, the, here's a, what it says if we, we follow, um, in verse, starting in verse 19, we follow our sinful desires and nature. The results are, and I'm not making these up, okay, you can look them up for yourself. <laughs> Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, idolatry. You don't have to say you're doing all these. That's okay, Buster. <laughs> We're all in there with you. <laughs> idolatry, sorcery, hostility, fighting, jealousy, anger, selfishness, division, drunkenness, wild parties, and this is my favorite one, and others like these. See, it's not an exhaustive list. He said that because he knows each of us could add to that. Right? That's who we are in our, in our nature, folks. And you can say you're better than that if you want, and you're just trying to fool God in us. That's who we are. That's why we needed a Savior. Listen, if not, humankind from the beginning, from Adam, wouldn't have a problem. Right? But, because of that sinful nature that we're born with, there's been a few problems since Adam. Wouldn't you think, say? <laughs> when the first family that God created, one of the sons murders the other one, that's not a good start. And we've been doing it ever since. Okay? That's why we end up where we are today. And every one of you has a story. Most of them, a, a, a church story you could tell about. Oh boy, I'll tell you one here. Well, that's because of the sin nature. And believe me, the sin nature is alive and well in the church. In this one, okay? Because we're here. So we need to start there to build the foundation. And so here you go. This will end with this because this is on a more positive note. Because <laughs> we know what we are in our nature. And then he goes on in verse 22 to say, but the fruit of the Spirit, and a lot of you can repeat this, and if you know it, do it with me, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And he ends that with saying, uh, there is no law against these. Basically, is what he says. Think about that. Why does he say that? Well, in our modern day laws, do you see any laws against love? Against someone being peaceful? What's happening right now with these riots? I call them riots. They said they're just protests, but to me, they're riots. A peaceful protest is fine. Nobody gets hurt. No traffic is stopped. But that's not what we're having today, right? Okay. There's no law against patience, kindness, being good to people, having faith, being faithful, being gentle. Or having self-control. I don't know of any. If you guys know of some laws against those, let me know. I'll change my sermon. Yeah. Well, then there must be a reason for that. Why have we not had to make laws against any of those fruits of the Spirit? Because they're all positive and they're good for us. They're good for the people around us. You go back to the list starting in 19. 
You can see why we had to make laws. It's chaos. It's chaos now with our laws, guys. <laughs> so bottom line is, we've got choices. Every one of us has to make choices one at a time. When you walk out of this door, you'll probably make three or four choices before you get to your car. And probably 20. So any of you that are thinking, I just can't live this kind of life. No, you can't. And I can't. But when we're surrendered to the Lord and following His Spirit and making the choices just one at a time, you can. You can everyone in here can make that right choice that first when you walk out of here. Oh, should I go see my mom or not? Eh. Well, that, that may or may not be a right or wrong, but let's just say it is. Because you know she's going to die tonight. Well, you can make that choice. Every one of us has free will. And we can choose to do what we want. Well, we see a society, especially, I hate to say it, in this last generation, this is a generation to do what you want. Amen. And where are we? Amen. They're not following these principles, I can tell you that. They're following the ones starting in verse 19. You can take this to the bank again, folks. Obedience equals blessing. If that's true and you guys agree, then disobedience, not obeying, has a result too. Right? It's not just blank or void or there's not a vacuum here. So keep that in mind. If you want to just coast along in life and be neutral, good luck. You're, you're, if, at the very least, you'll miss out on the blessings God has for you. Okay? Obedience always leads to blessings. Let's pray. Ed, bring a band up. Heavenly Father.